Hi guys, the Toted 2 patch 6.84 changelog has been released, highly anticipated, and if you want to follow along, it's at www.dota2.com slash 684 uh, for all the specifics, all the numbers, and every single one that I didn't cover in this particular video. And that's also where this lovely piece of artwork was taken from. And on the bottom left, you can find social media, all slash Malini Dota on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, and keep in mind that this analysis is probably more of a summary than an analysis. Uh, I don't really go into depth for every single little change, just I talk about what I think is important and what will actually change things up. So as usual, for the patch themes, uh, so you can keep these in mind as I read along the patch analysis video to you. For gold, there's three of them, less emphasis on creep gold. More emphasis on hero kills and objectives. This makes Dota a lot more exciting of a spectator sport when people are not farming and they're killing people. Shake up to the one through five position system and it won't be so set in stone anymore. Next we have uh, the hero changes, very few minor buffs, very, sorry, very few minor nerfs and very many minor buffs. Traditional Ice Rock style, slight power creep. And this overall goal is to increase the competitive hero pool Improve hero and item viability. He introduced a lot of new items, so that's definitely the case. Decrease average game length. More kills, uh, also more objectives instead of farming, and to increase the skill cap because there's a lot more decision making involved when it comes to drafting, item choices, so on and so forth. And this patch actually introduces new concept, which is not typically the case for patches. So six slot is no longer the soft cap for item farming. And this is the case with some new expensive consumables. So people may farm more because they no longer have the six slot limit, but it also may end games quicker because people aren't forced to push high ground when they're six slot capped. Next is a term that I dubbed intra-team welfare. Intra-team just means within the team. Poor heroes receive benefits at the expense of richer heroes in an attempt to equalize net worth within a team. This may be a little bit confusing, so I wanted to start off with a couple of examples of intra-team welfare. AoE bonus gold is now distributed based on the relative net worth amongst the heroes involved in killing the gold by plus or minus 25%. So if you're the poorest hero, you'll actually get more gold from kills, and if you're the richest hero, you'll actually get less gold from kills. Next, the amount of AoE bonus gold given is now increased slash decreased by up to 20% based on the dying hero's relative rank and net worth amongst all the enemies on that team. If you're the poor position 5 support and you get ganked and you die in half a second, you'll actually give 20% less gold than you would in 6.83c. And if you're the richest hero and you die, you actually give 20% more gold. So this gives the opposing team more incentives to kill the most expensive hero <laughs> and less incentives to feed off the weak supports. And lastly, Alchemist can now cast Aghanim's Scepter to directly grant any allied hero all Aghanim Scepter bonuses as a buff. The hero upgrade as well as a stat upgrade. The Scepter is consumed in the process. So this is an expensive consumable that Alchemist can give out to his supports on his team as welfare, pretty much. And that's pretty darn cool in that your super farmed heroes buff up your super weak heroes instead of the other way around, which I think has traditionally been the case for Dota. Next, we have some goal changes. The inter-team welfare system that I talked about. Creep bounty reduced by 10 to 20% across the board. Lane creeps a little bit less at about 7%. And neutral creeps a little bit more around that 15 to 20% range. Hero kill bounty increased by 10%. And buyback status rework now reduces all gold gained by 60%. So for the buyback status, if you die and you buy back and you just farm, you now get more gold. But if you buy back and you fight and you win a team fight, you'll get much less gold. So not really sure if that's an overall nerf or buff. I would say probably slight nerf though, because you're usually fighting because you're about to lose. Um, and regarding the creep bounty reduced by 10 to 20%, some people may think that since creep bounty is reduced, people might resort to stacking more to make up for the gold loss. But overall, I think that's the wrong way to think about it. I think it's just much easier to say hero kill bounty is worth more creep bounty is, is reduced so people will generally be killing people more and new expensive consumables the alchemist ag scepter as i talked about moon shard which gives a permanent attack speed buff around the order of 4300 gold and upgraded boots of travel which i'm pretty happy about 
but most of the time we'll be probably be seeing those on position twos and threes rather than position ones. Upgraded boots of travel, if you buy the recipe a second time, it allows you to teleport an allied hero to you as opposed to teleporting to that allied hero. I don't think it will have separate cooldowns. Uh, probably share the same cooldown, but not too positive about that. Uh, overall, swifter games because the comeback mechanic has been nerfed slightly. So that means if you keep a lead, if you have a lead, you're more likely to retain the lead uh, because if you feed away kills, you don't give away as much. Next, T2 and T3 tower armor has been reduced by three. Makes it easier to siege high ground. Extra siege, melee, and range creeps additions spawn time decreased. So you used to get like melee creeps every, I think, like 17 minutes or so. Uh, which would help with sieging the base, and now you get it every 15 minutes, which results, I believe, in a 45-minute um, extra creep instead of a 50-minute, which is pretty significant in the grand scheme of things. Melee and range racks team bounty increase, more incentives to push high ground and end the game quicker, and desolator cost decreased. I kind of want to put this in item changes, but it does help games become swifter because desolator applies the orb effect to buildings, and although the cost and the damage is decreased, the armor reduction is still the same, allowing you to siege high ground earlier. Some minor changes, AP drafting time reduced from 40 to 35 seconds, 50 seconds saved of your life every time you go into AP draft, potentially. Runes now have a higher hitbox priority over units, uh, which means that we may actually see more rune contests because a fat hero sitting on the rune will no longer be king of the bounty. Some slight non-hero reworks. Creeps now meet slightly closer to Dire safe lane. Some people complained that Radiant offlane was a lot easier than the Dire offlane. This is likely to normalize that discrepancy. Ring of Health, Void Stone, ooh, from Secret Shop to base. Plate Mail, Talisman, and Ulti Order from base to Secret Shop. If you can't find the item that you want to buy, don't fret. Just check the Secret Shop if it was in the base before, and check the base if it was in the Secret Shop before. Quelling Blade is now based off of base damage, not full damage. Likely not to affect your hero for the first like six or seven minutes of the game, but once you get like phase boots and Aquila and more and more items, your farm speed is going to be drastically reduced compared to before. And again, more incentive on fighting and killing people, and less incentive on farming. Diffusal Blade now works on range illusions for half value. This is a just overall mechanics change because range illusions never used to be able to mana burn. Mud Gloves also known as mud golems rework they now like split into two smaller mud golems they also have 50 percent magic resistance instead of 100 or being spell immune and on top of that they can hurl boulder if you hod them or you persuade them or enchant them damage block no longer affects physical spells this includes spells like shadow wave uh, tide hunter anchor smash and will buff those heroes as a result item silencing is now called mute passive disabling is now called break and Hex no longer applies break. This is a direct nerf to Lion, and you would think that Shadow uh, Shaman would be nerfed too, but he's actually has some buffs to compensate. So Lion is much weaker relative to Shadow Shaman, and Scythe of Vice is also weaker because it didn't get any buffs, and a lot of other items uh, received some small buffs. So Scythe of Vice weaker in the tier of items. So next we move on to the hero nerfs. Your tier one competitive heroes, almost all of them got nerfed. Axe, Bat Rider, Juggernaut, Sniper, uh, Troll. Some minor nerfs here and there, Shrapnel nerf, base damage on Troll World and a melee range nerfed. I won't go through them individually. And the minor ones, Meepo, Morphling Lena, Tramp Protector, Storm Spirit, Zeus. Uh, nerfs that you probably won't see unless you play the hero a fair amount. And for the non-Captain's Mode heroes, we have Earth Spirit nerfed, not moved to see him, not that big of a deal. Oracle's False Promise We Work Slightly, also not move to CM, not that big of a deal. And Winter Wyvern, Arctic Burn nerfed, Winter's Curse reworked, and added to CM. That is a big deal, because Winter Wyvern, his Cold Embrace just owns Juggernaut as well as Troll Warlord. Even Storm Spirit is pretty good against. So I will foresee a lot of Winter Wyvern and a lot less Juggernaut and Troll. Pretty good patch already. <laughs> Uh, notable hero buffs, and I've denoted a little Ag Scepter icon if they got changes to their Ags or an upgrade to their Ags. Alchemist, I already talked about earlier. Uh, he can now like cast the ulti on his, al uh, sorry, cast the Ags on his allies and give them an Ags upgrade. Uh, he also gets 4x gold bounty from runes. Uh, Bane, his nightmare no longer gives vision when, uh, to the unit who's nightmare. I believe that's only for enemy units. Actually, that's all units. So units affected by Nightmare no longer provide vision. Vision is a big deal. Bane 
pretty notable buff there. Beastmaster, base damage buff, probably makes him a stronger position one, or sorry, stronger position two, maybe a little bit stronger position four or five. Bounty Hunter, he's become a lot more shuriken toss centric. Uh, he's gotten more int, and he just does a lot more damage with that spell. It does like 375 instead of 325, a very big buff. Centaur, his Ags upgrade reduces, well, I'm going to double check this, reduces all incoming damage by 70% and allows allies to run through obstructions. Trees, cliffs, etc. destroys trees. That just sounds absolutely insanely broken to me. Maybe even more broken than the stampede stun effect that was when Centaur first came out. So, I don't know. Of all the things, I probably think that's one of the strongest changes in this patch. And Centaur's for sure going to be back in the offlane. 70% global damage reduction is ridiculous. Uh, especially on a hero that can form it. Uh, Darkseer, Wall of Replica got buffed a decent amount. Iron Shell slightly buffed too. Kind of needed it. Gyrocopter. Rocket Barrage no longer has a cast point. Previously, it was 0 0.3. And cast point buffs often don't seem like that big of a deal, but they are a big deal. Leshrac had a cast point buff on his Diabolic Edict, which made him insane and picked every single game. Then it got reverted, and he's kind of back in that dumpster area. Uh, but for Rocket Barrage, you have to be, like, very, very close to the hero, and it does a ton of damage, very similar to Edict, so I can kind of see this buffing Gyrocopter to where he was before. He's going to make him very strong in zoning out off laners, might even make him a strong mid laner, uh, definitely a better support, and overall, Gyrocopter likely to see a resurgence. Invoker, very cool change in that his max level deafening blast, level 25, now radiates outwards instead of being a direct line, so... This just overall buffs him, as well as some int gain, uh, sunstrike buffs, and whatnot. Lifestealer, his Ags upgrade allows you to assimilate a hero, which means you eat a hero, you heal the hero when you get healed, and they can also pop out and do AoE damage similar to Infest. Uh, other notable hero buffs, a lot of Ags upgrades on this one. Lone Druid, if you get an Ags, your bear is kind of way more independent. You don't have a leash range, and it doesn't die when you die. Morphling has Replicate as a very unique ability called Hybrid. Allows Morphling to target an ally, turning himself into a hydri hybrid illusion, removing your hero, and you're pretty much an illusion of that hero, except you can cast your non-ultimate spells. That's pretty darn ridiculous. I believe it's 100% damage. Cool. Nature's Prophet, uh, Nature's Call Triant base damage increase from 22... by 20... sorry, from 22 to 28. That's a lot of damage. 6 damage out of 22. Uh, also, when you use his ultimate with Ags, you now spawn a Treant whenever it kills a unit. And if it kills a hero, it spawns a super Treant. Nyx Assassin, his ultimate turns him into a Lurker with increased range on his first two abilities. His Spike Carapace instantly stuns around him, as well as giving him damage mitigation. It gives him 40% uh, 40, yeah, 40 damage resistance, as well as regeneration 1.5 percent mana and health so this thing is just super good multi-purpose longer range so you're like siege artillery now when you want to cast your first two abilities uh spike carapace aoe stun without them even having to do anything uh you can use it out of combat just to heal so you can go kill more people it is just overall very very good an ags upgrade od he has an ags upgrade cast astral on all heroes that get hit by his ultimate Riki. He now joins Batrider as one of the few heroes that can alter your turn rate. His smokescreen now reduces turn rate by 30% and indirectly buff, uh, nerfs Batrider because now he's not unique in that turn rate sense. Sand King, Caustic Finale reworked. Ursa, his Empower has been reworked. Sorry, Enrage. Uh, he causes him to take 80% less damage for 4 seconds, so not only is it a defensive cooldown, you also deal more damage. 2, 2.5, 3x the Fury Swipes damage, as well as removing any existing debuffs upon cast. That just sounds insane. It's like a BKB, Mask of Madness without any of the negative effects. Uh, it <laughs> It is an insane uh, upgrade. Uh, Visage... Um, let's see, Gravekeeper's Cloak buffed a little bit. Familiars now require four hits to die instead of one really strong hit from a carry. Weaver, his Ags upgrade is also insane. You can cast time lapse on other people now with a 20 second cooldown. So Weaver Ags upgrade and Centaur's Ags upgrade are just 
uh, it just blows my mind how potent they are. Moderate upgrades, moderate uh, hero buffs, Dragonite, Enchantress, uh, Luna, now you can cast Eclipse in a 2500 radius of your hero. If you have Ags, Naga now like heals people with her song if you have Ags. Uh, Shadow Demon applies Break, which is passive disabling with his Ags. Techies now disables True Sign in a very tiny area around his minefield when you have Ags. Tinker uh, removes the double range functionality from Laser and instead it causes it to propagate to other heroes within a certain range. Also, his laser got buffed three second miss, uh, to three second blind rather to 4.5 second blind. Wraith King, if you have Ags, whenever a hero dies in a 1200 radius around you, they're kept alive for five seconds in spirit, but they can still cast all their spells, and then after that five seconds, they die. Kind of like Shallow Grave, except you definitely die afterwards. Pretty cool upgrade. Uh, and. Next, notable item changes. Uh, first, a few nerfs. Yule's active mana cost increase from 75 to 175. You might have to think twice about getting it if you're not int hero. Mask of Madness MS bonus reduced from 30% to 17%. Much needed. Refresher Orb now builds up from two perseverances. Really crappy, by the way, and a recipe. Uh, Radiance buffed pretty significantly. Costs slightly more, but it causes affected enemies to have a small blind. 17% uh, miss chance. Uh, Observer Rewards now sold in single increments, stacking the same slot as sentries. Pretty big quality of life improvement for supports. Vlad's Offering now grants life steal to range. Uh, stout Shield, I would say overall a little bit weaker. It's cheaper, but it blocks less damage. Uh, but you keep Stout Shield for a pretty long time, so I think overall you want that to be a valuable slot. BKB gets buffed, can now be sold. Desolator, I already discussed. Necro, Nomicon levels 1 and 2 has been buffed, and Pipe. One of the most undergotten items in the game, 10% magic resist aura. I like it. And next we have new items. Uh, Enchanted Mango. Kind of a mix in between half a ring of regen as well as a clarity. Um, it provides 1 HP a second and on use it gives you, I believe, 150 mana. I don't think you can pull it though. Uh, Glimmer Cape 1950 Gold Cloak and Shadow Amulet. You can use it on allies to give them an invis buff for 5 seconds, as well as huge magic resistance while they are invis. I believe it's 66% magic resistance. Pretty nice defensive item for supports. Solar Crest 3800 Medallion of Courage plus Talisman Evasion. Pretty much makes it a super Medallion of Courage. Not only do you give armor to your allies, you now give them evasion. And when you cast on enemies, they have a missed chance as well as huge minus armor. Lotus Orb, probably one of the coolest items in the patch. Form from a plate mail, perseverance, and a recipe. When you cast it, it's kind of like a mirror armor on the target that you cast it on. Any spells cast on him will be reflected back to the caster. It makes it very difficult to focus down heroes nowadays. Moonshard, one of the ex super expensive consumer bulls, 4,300 gold. Hyperstone, Hyperstone recipe. It gives a ton of attack speed if you don't consume it. 120, I believe, as well as 250 night vision. Uh, but when you eat it or consume it upon yourself, it gives you a one-time buff. Uh, sorry, it gives you a buff that you can only use one time. Um, it doesn't stack with itself for 60% permanent attack speed. So another gold dump in the late, late game. Silver Edge, Sage, and Shadow Blade. Probably both undergotten items. Sage, notoriously crappy. It applies Break on Attack, which is Disable Passive, as well as a 40% damage reduction, damage output on the target that you break on. So pretty much a super shadow blade with a lot of defensive capabilities that MAME just doesn't cut up the snuff for. Guardian Grease, 5300 gold, Arcane Boots, Mechanism, Recipe, pretty much a super support item. Uh, Arcane Boots plus mech on use as well as giving increased armor and HP regeneration to very low HP allies. Lastly, my favorite item, Octarine Core, 5900 gold, Mystic Staff, and a Soul Booster. This item is insane, and I really like it because I like in heroes. It gives, reduces all cooldown reduction by 25%. I think that in itself is pretty damn good. And then on top of that, Spell Lifesteal, restores health for a percentage of any damage dealt from spells, 25% from heroes, 5% from creeps. So that is insane on heroes like Lina, heroes like Zeus. 
granted they're not taking that much damage but this is i would say a much better alternative than refresher orb uh on a lot of the int heroes so overall going to revisit the patch themes a shake up to the traditional one through five position system uh now you're very weak supports four to five can get very valuable items and you might want to give them a little bit more farm so they can protect their ones and twos a little bit more as well as octoring core the cooldown reduction and life steal for spells that may actually turn a lot of twos into position ones uh, for heroes very few nerfs many buffs traditional ice frog style slight power creep and the goals increase competitive hero pool i think that's pretty much a given with troll sniper axe uh, being nerfed and a lot of heroes getting buffed check mark on that one improve hero and item viability with all these new items i think it's going to improve the viability <laughs> of the item pool in general as well as um a lot of minor buffs across the board i didn't really list the buffs for all the other items but yes i think that's also a check mark decrease average game length uh with the racks giving more gold uh creeps being a little bit uh, not as strong, but spawning more often. I think average game length should decrease by maybe like 30 seconds to a minute on average, if even. Uh, more kills. Bloodbath is always good. I love Bloodshed and Dota. And more objectives being taken instead of farming. I also like that. It makes it a lot more spectator friendly. And it increases the skill cap because there's a lot more decisions to be made. Uh, not only for drafting. It's like, oh, huh, I wonder, should I pick Troll or Sniper here? It's not that easy anymore. And, of course, there's so many items now, especially the um, 3,000 to 5,000 gold tier, even 6,000, that your late-game decision-making, your item choices are going to be very, very important and not as clear-cut as before. So decision-making is harder, increases skill cap. Uh, so overall, thank you guys for joining me for Dota 2 patch 6.84 analysis. I think it's a very good patch, as are most of the major patches, the non-BC uh, revision versions. I'm very excited to play it as soon as it comes out. Thank you guys, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, youtube.com slash Dota. I do a patch analysis for every uh, major patch that comes out, as well as release YouTube videos twice a week to try and improve your Dota 2 play. Thank you guys once again. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching.